And so, guys and gals, here is finally my full review for the 1.43 update in, of course, Gran Turismo Sport. The reason why I didn't do this yesterday is simply because my internet is useless sometimes. If I start an upload or an update even at like 7 in the morning, then it will get done in an hour. If I start it at 9 in the morning, it will take 15 hours. Why? Who knows? But that was the case yesterday, so I thought, you know what? Let's just give everyone the chance to play the game, don't even try to release the video yesterday, and just do it today instead. So that's exactly what I've done. The second thing to note is, where exactly was the 1.42 update? Because I, and along with many of you, thought that this was the 1.42 update, so I'm not exactly sure where that one went. But as far as my thoughts on this pack as a whole, many of you know exactly how I feel, many of you watched and many disliked the video that I put out about it with my little mini rant. Those who think that that was a rant probably haven't been around on the channel for that long, because <laughs> that was pretty tame compared to stuff that I actually care about in depth. But we do not have spa, we have rain on two circuits at very select times of day, so if you were really looking forward to weather or rain specifically, don't get your hopes up too much as far as using it. It's there, but it almost feels like rain beta to some degree. Now, as far as how the rain feels, first of all, because of course that is the highlight of the pack, I do like the rain or more so the wet road, because the rain itself is barely visible. It is on the windscreen to some degree. As you can see, I'm driving the Mitsubishi GTO there with the wet tires. I chose the all-wheel drive car because, again, it's just a little bit easier to use in the rain, and also at the same time gives me a feel for what is the most powerful car of the pack, the aforementioned Mitsubishi. Now, as far as how the rain feels, it feels good. It feels realistic enough, considering that the car should be more challenging. As far as the visuals go, and I know many of you agree with this, especially those who have actually played it, as far as I'm concerned, there has never been any other racing game that will beat the rain physics of Drive Club, because it just looks incredible, and still, for its age, looks incredible. But they certainly have tried. <laughs> the puddles look better than anything on the track, and that's something which also uh, Forza Horizon and Drive Club also do a very good job of, having the rain kind of collect on the track, rather than just a default slick texture everywhere, which is what, of course, Sakuba Circuit had back in Gran Turismo 4, when that was the only wet circuit in the game. So, apart from rain, which doubtless we'll probably get into again on the channel, what about the cars themselves and other features and additions to the game. Well, as far as career mode and track experience and scapes, it's actually a pretty light update. There's not much there to talk about. There is no new track experience, which is surprising. There, uh, there are no new scapes, which sometimes happens. Usually you have a couple of new scapes, but not this time. So it really does seem to be totally focused on the five cars and the rain. So what about those five? Well, I briefly touched on the Mitsubishi. The Mitsubishi is the most powerful of the pack, it's also the heaviest, and for those who are maybe new to the channel and this is the first video that you're watching, the way that these work is I just give my very brief thoughts on each of the cars and features, and then we'll get much more in-depth on each of the cars in their own dedicated review over the coming days on the channel, as well as tuning them all as well. So, my brief thoughts on the Mitsubishi are, it's big, it's heavy, it's all-wheel drive, it's powerful, it's talky, it's kind of like Mitsubishi's answer to a combination of the Supra and the GTR put together. I like that. I'm not a huge fan of the GTO, never have been, but I certainly understand why people would be. Now, as far as the next car in the pack, we'll go next to the Corolla. Now, to lay all of my cards on the table, the Corolla Levin is the only car of the five that I do not like. But, it's not because I don't like the car. <laughs> and that sounds counterintuitive, but what I mean by that is, ironically, I actually like the Corolla Levin more than the Sprinter Truno. I think it looks way better at the front end. In terms of performance, they pretty much break even. There might be some slight changes, but nothing too significant. The reason why I don't like that the car was put in is because we already have the Sprinter Truno. And when so few cars are added to the game, Make it feel like it counts. We don't just need a facelift of something that's already in the game. It's essentially the same thing that they already did with those two Clios that were exactly the same, but technically not the same, they're the same. You know, come on, let's not fool ourselves. You could have quite easily had something like a Sylvia S15, which is a completely different machine to the S13, instead of just another variation of the A86 lineage. Or at least that's my point of view. And doubtless many people will disagree, because of course they will. Now, as far as the next vehicle in the pack, because 
you know, I didn't really get into what the Corolla can do because you already know what it can do. It's the same as the Sprinter. So if you like that car, you'll like this one. As far as the Subaru, this is a car which might surprise you in terms of my take on it because a lot of people have also been saying, oh, the Subaru's a duplicate as well. It may as well be the 22B. I definitely do not agree on that point. It's not a duplicate. It's not even close. And the only people who would think it is are people who are simply unfamiliar with the Impreza lineage because it's not even close to being similar. That's like saying that a, a Mercedes 190 is exactly the same as a 190e Evo 2. No, not even close. One is a pure homologation special built to a very specific purpose. It's super exclusive and very expensive. And one's just a sedan. That's kind of like the difference between this Evo and the 22B. This is the high performance mainstream Impreza. The 22B is not. It's a limited edition, ultra rare, very highly sought after, very expensive variant with the full WRC wide body kit fitted to it with the very uh, Group B style flared arches. It has performance which goes beyond the raw spec and it's just not even close. It's not. It's like saying that a Mercedes C63 AMG is the same as a C63 Black Edition. Again, not even close. So, my thoughts on the Subaru are, it feels like you'd expect a Subaru to feel. The handling is good, maybe a little bit on the heavy side with the traction on the front end, but nothing that a bit of tuning can't solve, and it feels great. Of course, the Mitsubishi Evo and the Subaru Impreza both are very forgiving performance cars overall, so it's not really going to bite back or surprise you in any particular way, and doubtless tons of people will be putting the 555 livery on it and taking it on the dirt, because it's the most obvious thing to do, so you can definitely have a lot of fun doing that. And of course, last but definitely not least, a very, very highly requested car, and a car which, to be honest, I'm surprised it took them this long to add, at least in this form, and that is of course the Honda S2000. Now, I actually like that they featured the original, because A, I'm not a fan of the facelifted S2000 anyway, I think this one looks a purer, cleaner, prettier shape, but also it surprises me that they added the Amuse version first. The Amuse is an awesome car in its own way, it looks stunning, it's like a late 90s GT1, but at the same time, you would think they'd had the road version first. I'm not complaining, it just surprises me. So what's this one like? Well, it's a sports car that's iconic for good reason. It goes way beyond being JDM. People who just like sports cars in general almost unanimously respect the S2000 because it's a good car. You get the same kind of advantages that you would in the motorbike world from buying a Honda Superbike, like a Fireblade for instance, and that is that you get all of the performance that you get from a rival like Kawasaki or Yamaha, but you get that Honda reliability and the attention to detail and the engineering. Exactly likewise with the S2000, sports cars are not exactly known for being reliable or particularly well built more often than not. Just think of some examples, TVR for instance, the Honda S2000 gives you what you would want from a sports car, which is the looks, the fun, the sound, the performance, but it's also a Honda, so it's well made, it's reliable, and it's just a car that's not really going to let you down in any particular way. And I think actually they've done a very good job of mirroring that in the game, because although of course reliability does not matter in a racing game more often than not, certainly not in GT Sport, the car feels great, it sounds great, it looks of course like an S2000, so that's down to personal opinion whether you think the car looks good or not. I personally love the way the S2000 feels, it's got a little bit of tail happiness, which it should have, very high revving VTEC engine obviously, but the handling is nice, you get a lot of driver feedback, it's a kind of a BMW M3 style machine, where you know exactly what the car is going to do even when the car steps out a little bit you're expecting it to so you can work with it it feels great to work with i like the s2000 i don't love any of the five cars in the game or in real life but it's one of those occasions where i understand why people like all of them so much so for those who were really wanting these then of course i'm happy for you now i mentioned that the s2000 was the last but not least but actually it's not the s13 sylvia of course is arguably one of the most significant if not the most significant of the five cars because it's been one of the most requested cars not necessarily Necessarily the S13 in particular, I would probably wager that the S14 and maybe even the S15 would have more community votes if you were to ask people which Sylvia they wanted, but it's not surprising at all that the Sylvia has finally come to the game. Of course the Drift community wants it, in a similar way to the AE86. It joins a great club of JDM in the game now. You've got the AE86, the FC RX-7, the older Supra, etc. It's, it's certainly among friends, that's for sure. 
And I will say, and of course I'll get into this more in its own review, I actually like the handling on the S13 the most out of all five cars. It feels fantastic through corners. It doesn't have a huge amount of power, doesn't have a particularly large engine, but it's also not that heavy. It's very understated, kind of a sleeper car as far as coupes go. And although it's iconic because of its drifting prowess, I would argue it makes for a very good track car in general, regardless of drifting. So I actually like the handling on that one the most. None of the cars disappoint me from a performance point of view. It's just that the Corolla disappoints me from a, a needless duplicate point of view or close enough. So overall, that's it for my thoughts on the rain and on the new cars. As far as features, not much else seems to have been added. As I said, no scapes, no particular new circuit experience. Didn't seem to be much in the way of new career mode stuff, maybe one or two, but nothing too amazing. So overall, as I said, that's it for my thoughts. Since you've had a full day to process it and play the game, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. And of course, stick around on the channel for my individual breakdowns of the cars, including what their tuning capabilities are and some actual tune setups for them as well. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.